because otherwise this book you have to wait another two years to get the book uh, if they had a chance to look at submission. But they know uh, which kind of they. We always do a storyboard for a book and for an exhibition that are a little bit different. So they know the storyboard. It's like a film. They know the storyboard. They know at which point we want them to come in. They also, we don't want them to know too much because in a certain way it's like if you are a director of the film and you have an actor there, so there is a very, it depends a lot on the people, but there's a kind of way, okay, this point you come in and you say this <coughs> is okay for you, that is the problem that we want you to deal with. We read your books, we saw your previous films, uh, no, no. we know that you can play that part. Uh, so it's a really a, a, a relationship which is built every time on the exchange of the information that we have at that moment. And generally, uh, we, we decided uh, recently for some books uh, uh, to, to publish them after the exhibition. In some cases, uh, like uh, uh, I think this one, of uh, Nishizawa and of Steven Taylor, because we wanted to integrate inside uh, some photos of the installation. So we waited a little bit uh, for introducing that in the exhibition, uh, in the book, because we thought it was nice to have a book which was not, uh, again, a book on the projects of these two architects. Sana and Stephen Taylor in London, Sana in Japan on the housing, but I was introducing the idea of the exhibition in the book because the installation was done by them uh, with us. And in the case of Imperfect Health, because uh, the authors that we asked to contribute, they, they ask us uh, more time uh, to develop the specific research for the topic that we discussed with them to introduce. So we decided that because the book is in a certain way something which is uh, as a different timeline than uh, the exhibition, even if it was coming out uh, one, two months, three months after the, the opening of the exhibition, was worthwhile to wait for having some contribution. And, uh, you know, this book, uh, the, the life of this book will be much longer than the, the life of the exhibition. So we try to have the perfect solution, exhibition, book, uh, e-book, uh, website at the same time. But uh, and generally, is, it is also possible, but the also investment of resources, people and money that you have to do to obtain that, we think that uh, is not uh, sometimes justified, sometimes uh, our resources also are more limited now, so we try our best to, to manage and we accept to come out with a book two or three months later for certain reason. And it's also good for us because we had to write the book, so you know, it was a good excuse to say, oh, this author is not delivering that, so I also don't deliver for that day, and I do the same like that also. <laughs> so it's a good, a good excuse. At authors, they always find the excuse not to deliver on time. And being, uh, I have been working as an editor like Giovanna and as an author, so we know all the tricks on the two sides. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, in a certain way, uh, we know, and uh, the reason that also uh, Fabrizio now uh, is uh, at CCA is also because he's like us. He's both an author and an editor, so he knows all the tricks on the two sides, so he would be able to continue this uh, kind of uh, 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 strategy of CCA uh, to deal with authors and editors, because we know the game, we are part of the game, uh, and uh, that will help us in the future to manage all the, how can I say, uh, unwilling authors to deliver their, their uh, pieces, and uh, 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 anxious editor willing to finish everything uh, three weeks before. So you give them a deadline which is one month before what is the real deadline. They know that, they give you a deadline which is two months after that, you know, it's a game like that at the very end. And at the end, sometimes it's worse, sometimes not. 
you know, it's a nice game when you know that. And I don't think that in the production of ebooks or uh, application for the, the web is very different. The problem of delivery is always the same, only the, 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 the pace is much faster. Uh, we are a little bit against the idea of um, fast delivery. So perhaps we sometimes we decide by purpose to go on a very slow delivery system. And also this experiment that we did for the web for this kind of uh, TV program was in a certain way a very strong uh, ideological uh, statement on the assumption that on the web you go there and you find everything and uh, you look and do a search. So was the idea to introduce on the, on the web a TV program like 1950s. So you open that day at that hour, you find that. You open another day at another hour, you find something else. But if you want to see these uh, that hour, impossible. You have uh, to, to, to go back to the program and to read the program and to look at that. You know, when you do these kind of things, you also you know, enjoy some games. This is one of that. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I apologize for my wife and me. So we might have already answered this question. Um, and I'll preface the question by saying it's not meant to be political at all. But just given the fact that there are two major hospital infrastructures being built locally, have you been approached um, by the administration or the city to have a discussion about how they, you know, just because this is a beautiful exhibit and it's often very timely for them as well? Uh, no. Uh, but we already answered this before your arrival. <laughs> no, I say that no, but uh, the, on the other side, uh, I have to say that uh, in the past, uh, the Neurological Institute, uh, uh, with the previous director, uh, unfortunately, uh, is not anymore uh, there, uh, we had um, some discussion with McGill because they were very interested uh, in the work that we were doing. And it was the hypothesis uh, of a seminar discussion with them about these kind of issues. <coughs> but the two major infrastructure in Montreal, no, we have not been contacted. Uh, and we don't want to enter a political uh, issues. What uh, is very clear of this uh, book and the, our research is also that we didn't want to enter the hospital uh, issue or the specific building for health as they are typologically recognized by architects because our point uh, is that in reality uh, the real issues of health today has to do much more with uh, the general uh, built environment in which uh, we are part of and to reduce the idea of health to the problem of hospital is by itself a wrong political decision. Health has to be uh, addressed uh, in a much more um, diffuse way and not uh, to be reduced to the problem of a good hospital or a bad hospital uh, or a good uh, treatment place. or a, Because in this sense you reduce health to a problem of illness. And uh, health is much more than that. Clearly, we have the other opposite problem that today in our society, everything is becoming a health problem, even if it is not sometimes. And that was the reason also the subtitle of the book, which is Medicalization of Architecture, which is coming from this uh, critique of contemporary society uh, in, in which there is a kind of medicalization of the contemporary society. What does it mean that every problem is transformed in a medical problem and then you look for a medical solution. And as long as you find a medical solution, you think that, that uh, in that way you solve the problem. i give you an example. Uh, obesity is uh, considered today a, a medical issue. It was not in the past. It has become a medical issue in the last uh, 10, 20 years. It also, has also become a very a kind of epidemic uh, situation, but some people, they say that it's wrong to call that epidemic. So if you call obesity an epidemic and a medical problem, you will put in place a certain way of treatment of obesity, which are very medical. 
uh, and architects, they are part of this game, for example, in, uh, in the active guidelines uh, in New York uh, for architects, uh, they suggest the architects to put the stairs in the building instead of elevators. They suggest to have park in which you have, uh, people have to move. <coughs> now, I have nothing against stairs, and uh, by the way, there is a famous uh, quotation of Cary Grant, that Cary Grant uh, uh, was always uh, perfectly fit. He never did uh, any gym in all his life. He never went to any gym, but he only took the stairs every day to move through the studios, and, and that was the perfect uh, training for him. So nothing against the stairs. But uh, to think that uh, having stairs and having a park and forcing people to move because of that, introducing this kind of moralistic attitude that if you don't do an active life, you are uh, a kind of uh, paria of your society and you are not entitled because of that to enter any other public uh, support for your health it is a very clear ideological, cultural, social, political position that you take. So to have stairs is very good, but to think that stairs will solve the problem of obesity is you know, a, a big step uh, in between that. So the risk of a medicalization of architecture is also the risk of incorporating this uh, neoliberal agenda that is at the base of a lot of this program more and more everywhere, in spite of the kind of critique of the, this agenda that is coming out, and uh, incorporating that in the, in the projects of, of, of architecture uh, without understanding the consequences of certain things is always a little bit uh, questionable. So I don't have any answer for that. I think that uh, to have nice stairs is good. Uh, to think that nice stairs will solve the problem of uh, obesity is really a little bit uh, too much, and uh, <coughs> obesity is really a social, uh, cultural uh, uh, problem very related to the idea of wealth. And uh, all the studies that we have looked at, uh, they, they demonstrate that in reality, the main factor in health uh, in the population is related to the wealth of the different social classes that uh, they are. Uh, investigated, uh, as has been said uh, in the already in the 70s, mm, uh, medical issues they always implies not only medical uh, and so-called scientific uh, approach, but always uh, there is a set of values, set of social values, moral <coughs> values, and judgments that are at the base of a lot of things. You see that in the uh, in the setting of our health agenda uh, in, in the contemporary society. So a long story not to respond to your, your, your <laughs> questions, but uh, the short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, we perhaps will repeat this in the future for other things of CCA. And we'll try to have other things like here or in the galleries on the State Center, like we try sometimes on the web uh, to tell you in a certain way the backstage of what we do so that uh, you can uh, understand uh, uh, why we do certain things and why we do certain mistaken or why we do certain uh, results and certain exhibitions or certain books or certain seminars and certain programs. So, Feel free also to ask uh, all of us whenever you find us around uh, why we do certain things. And uh, if you don't like, uh, let us know. We don't change uh, because of that, but uh, we will consider your point uh, and we'll try anyway to, to improve. Thank you again. <laughs>